So this is where I record my videos. And you can see it's just my classroom. And I use the whiteboard up at the front because it has that tray that's really handy for putting, the, uh, for putting my whiteboards in. And over here, you can see I'm ready to uh, create the whiteboards for this next video that I'm doing. And this is everything I need to, uh, to prepare my whiteboards. I've got two whiteboards because this video I've decided I'm going to have uh, two whiteboards. Here's the set of uh, notes, set of guided notes that I'm going to be using to, uh, to prepare my whiteboards. I got two markers, I got some uh, Windex and a wipe off rag for erasing. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, this video is going to be a fairly straightforward one. Um, you can see in my uh, notes here I've got two examples, example one, example two, and basically my video is just going to be of me uh, walking through those examples. And so I'm going to have one board for example one and one board for example two. All right, so let me get those put together here. Okay, so now you can see I've got my two whiteboards that I've prepared now. And you can see all I've done here, this is board number one. And all I've done is up here in the top right corner, I've got the, you know, kind of the name of the video, what this particular video is going to be about, compounding interest. And on board number one, I've got example number one. And again, this is just from my notes. All right, this is just, I'm just copying the example here from my notes onto my whiteboard. So board number one, so in the video, I'm going to use this space down here to actually work out the example, example number one. And then board number two is just example number two. And again, I'm going to use the you know, space down here on the bottom part of this board to work out example number two. All right, so the next step is to take my boards and to set them up over here on, my, uh, on the tray on my whiteboard for the, uh, for the making of the video. So once you've got your whiteboards put together, before you actually record your video, you want to kind of plan out what you're going to say in the video. And there's different ways to do that. Some people will actually, you know, kind of write out an actual script. I typically will just take the notes that I'm using, the guided notes that I've, you know, that I use to prepare my, my whiteboards with, and I'll just kind of write, you know, on there what exactly it is that I'm expecting my students to write down on their notes. And this also kind of lets me kind of work through, you know, what exactly do I want to say, what do I want to write on my boards as I'm you know, going through and explaining, you know, what I'm doing in the video. So you can see on this one here, I've kind of written down what I'm going to be doing for example one and what I'm going to be writing down for example two. And you can see I've, there's some stuff there that I scratched out. I thought maybe I'll do it like this. No, no, I'll talk it like that. And as I'm kind of working through these examples on the paper, I'm kind of talking through in my head Here's what I'm gonna, you know. Here's what I think I'm gonna be saying in the video. Here's what I'm gonna focus on. You know, here's some things I'm gonna point out, etc. All right. So this kind of, you know, makes up my script for my video. And now I'm ready to start recording. Okay. So now I'm actually ready to record my video. I've got my whiteboards ready. I've got my camera on my tripod here. I've got the stool that I'm going to be sitting on. I've got my notes, my script here for my video. So now I'm ready to record. Okay. So I'm going to turn my camera on. And make sure I've got everything in the frame like I want it. Yes, I do. And so let me do my frame check. Just to make sure that my head is in the frame where I want it. Okay, this is a frame check for compounding interest. I'm sure my head is in the frame. All right, I'm actually a little bit too far to the left, so I'm going to move myself over and do my frame check again. All right, frame check number two for compounding interest. Okay, that's better. All right, now I get my red marker. I typically do all my writing on the boards in red since I write on the board in, uh, in black so they can see you know, what I'm writing while I'm solving my examples here. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the video. Okay, show them off the cord here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, in this video we're going to look at compounding interest, and we're going to look at it, here's my first take that wasn't quite how I wanted it. Okay, in this video we're going to look at compounding interest, and we're going to take, alright, so here's an example of the, the first hurdle, which is like the first 10 to 15 seconds of the video, which I very often have trouble, you know, getting past that, so. Now I'm on my third take here. All right, let me make sure I know what I want to say. Okay, in this video we're going to look at compounding interest. So let's take a look at example number one from your notes. If $400 is invested at 5% per year, compounded annually, what's the total amount after six years? Okay, so we recognize this as an exponential growth type problem, which means we're going to be using y equals a times b to the power six. Right, so this number here, it kind of has gone from being a time value to being the number of compounding periods, or the number of times we're going to calculate interest. So this value now is 12. Now I'm ready to calculate my interest 400 times 1.025 to the power of 12, and I punch this into my calculator, and I find that the total amount in my account after six years is going to be $537.96, or a little bit more than I would have gotten if I had used uh, annual compound. Now already, there's things about this video that I'm not crazy about, all right? I, I, I wish that I had a little bit more room over here because I had you know, some other stuff that I wanted to write down here about number of compounding periods. I wanted to actually write a little bit more where I was, you know, talk a little bit more about this as the number of compounding periods versus time, and I wanted to have a place to write that down. But So there, there's things about it that I already don't like. I'm not worried about that. I'll take care of that in a future version of the video for now. This is better than what I currently have. So I'm ready to upload this to YouTube and call it good. All right, so now I'm finished with making this video. Next step, upload it to YouTube. Okay, so now I'm ready to upload my video to my YouTube account, which you can see I've got my browser open to my YouTube account here. And now the way you upload your videos to YouTube may be slightly different, especially if you are using a smartphone. You may have an app on your smartphone to upload directly, but I'm going to show you how mine works. So I've got my video on, is on this video camera right here, and it has a little USB connector there in the top. And so I just need to plug that in to my USB port here on the side of my laptop, and then I need to turn my turn the video camera on and it will come up on the screen here in just a minute. There it is. And this one, I have to shut that one, open folder to view files. And so on mine, I just have to navigate to the folder on my video camera. And so now here are all of the different videos that I have on my video camera and I want the most recent one. So that's this one right here. And I can see it's a, mine records as an MP4 movie file. And so all I have to do now is I just need to drag and drop that onto my YouTube download screen, or rather upload screen. So let's see. Here's my YouTube screen. And on YouTube, I click on the little button here that says Upload. Pull that up here. So this is, this is the first screen that comes up when I go to my YouTube account. And there's a little button here that says Upload. So I click on that. And it gives me this screen here that says you can drag and drop video files onto this area right here. So I'm just going to find that video that I just recorded. It's right here on my video camera and I'm just going to drag and drop it right here. And now my video is uploading to my YouTube account. Now typically as soon as I you know, drag and drop and start uploading, I go ahead and click this publish button 
just to make sure that it's going to be, you know, it's going to be made public, you know, as soon as the video is finished uploading. And then I can go in and, you know, do some other things. If I click here and say return to editing, then while it's still uploading, I can actually go in here and I can change the name of it to, you know, compounding interest or whatever name I want to use. And then you can say save changes or it'll save automatically. So now after you know, a few minutes, however long it takes for this video to upload, it'll be uploaded. I've got the link right here. I can post that on my website or you know, just be, you know, put it anywhere that I want and my video will be ready to go.